Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. I'm back again with another T9 video discussing the battleships this time. Unlike any of my other series, I will be discussing every single T9 battleship. Yes, all the T9 battleships will be coming through. Now, I do have the collaboration series which has been postponed severely with uh, Randy. I do understand that a lot of people were looking forward to it. Uh, Randy, I don't know when he's going to be available, um, but honestly, as soon as he is available, we will make that. I might also be working with True Beast on a video series. Well, at least from what True Beast said, we should be running one in the next few days. So yeah, we, we will be going for that in a few days' time. So let's let's just get into exactly what goes into building these T9 battleships. And here's something to note. Even though we are building T9 battleships and we can run them, the figures that we get off the content creator server are nowhere near the figures that we have in game. And that's because of the content creator server we have max research on all of our research. So there isn't anything for us to learn and even if we wanted to reset and focus things out, there's too many things to focus out to actually work on what we actually have. For for a player who fully respects and goes just with Battleship, they won't have shield bonuses, right? That's if they want to go full Battleship with uh, some weapon research. If you want to go full weapon research, you'll only have two full researches when it comes to the ship. You have to sacrifice one. If you have everything balanced at 2-2, uh, then you don't have the expert level research and those are things to note when it comes to getting your research and comparing to the figures we give from the content creators. So remember, if you're going to ask why things seem so ridiculous, that's because we have full range and full power from our systems. So let's get into the Scorpion Battleship and I apologize for there being no update video yesterday. I launched two in my time when the day started, so I didn't launch another video. It didn't seem appropriate since there weren't any patch notes. Okay, so the Scorpion Battleship. Let's give a, a rundown on what's exactly available on the ship. So two drone slots, five high slots, four mid slots, five low slots, and three by three in the rigs like all other ships. This is one thing that I have to say. It isn't very impressive from its uh, rig setup. Uh, I could outdo it with a Naga any day and there isn't even a question about it. Okay, advanced electronic warfare bonus per level, plus 10% disruption strength, plus 10% disruption optimal range. This here means that you're going to get 50% extra added with your full research in advanced electronic warfare. So this means that your 90 uh, kilometer range on your disruptors will turn into 135. So if someone can fire from 140, they win. That's the way that it's going. Okay, plus 5% scan resolution optimized. It's a 25% scan resolution added. Battleship command per level, plus 15% turret damage, plus 15% to missile or torpedo damage. Now this makes a very big difference because it's 75% added DPS. So when you add that in, you're going to remember that's a large portion. It's almost doubling what they can do. So please note when I go through the weapons for the ship, there is something you should be keeping in your mind. Those weapon damages are almost doubled. Okay, so overall defense is 68,000. This is a Kaldari ship, so it's a shield tank. 121 meters per second, so it's really fast. 2 AU warp speed, 6,879 megawatt power grid. Now with the power grid that large, that means everything on the ship can be large. Large shield extender, large shield boosters, uh, large weapons, large muds. So everything on the ship is large. It has a 7,288 gigajoule capacitor. This is going to be very useful for the ship. With that size capacitor, it's going to be comparable to um, a lot of the other ships that we've run with so far. It's not going to beat its previous class predecessor, the Naga 2, because the Naga 2 is going to have a severe amount of firepower behind it. Okay, cargo hold capacity 11,000 cubic meters. You have to understand one thing, without range bonuses to turrets, which is railguns basically, 
the shop isn't going to be able to match something like the Naga. The Naga can do extreme damage across massive distances. Where this ship will shine is on the close range combat, so understand that it's more or less meant for brawling and it's not really meant for long range sustained combat. You'll see exactly what I mean when I go through its fit ups. Okay, so first let's get to the high slots in the form of railguns. Now we obviously have two options for railguns. We have the rifled railguns that's going to give us some range. However, remember we're not getting bonuses from the ship, so we can't really add on much range. So it's a 36 km optimal and a 20 km fall off. So with this being put on, we know that the, the last 15 km into the ship are blind spot and we know that um, past 56 km the ship will do no damage basically no damage and that's the way that it's going to run but we know that it's going to have 75 percent additional damage so you add 45 to it that makes it 100 dps on the default when placed on the ship and with the bonuses from your research you're looking at upward of 130 dps per weapon it holds five of them so you're looking at around 650 dps on the ship just in the form of your primary weapons you still have two drones which come on at 120 a piece so there you go about 860 dps from the ship if you're running the large uh, rifle railguns next thing is the slum nose railguns now this is a lot more firepower but it's also a lot closer range with this here you have 75 as the optimal when you add in the boost from its um, weapon bonus which is uh, command per level this ship is going to have a massive amount of DPS coming out from the Snubnose Railguns. It's going to be upwards of 140, so it, oh, it should be around 140 to be honest. So 140 times 5, then you still have to add bonuses to the ship, so it's going to pass 150. So if you just count 140 times 5, that's over 700 in just raw power from its Snubnoses. Plus you still have to add two drones to it, so it's going to be near 940 dps if the rest of the dps does come through from research you're most probably going to be sitting somewhere near 990 to 1000 dps with the ship and that's with only five weapons on this vessel okay so we've gone through the rifle railgun option these are really powerful weapons you have to understand that these weapon systems do massive dps so let's go down to the next option for the ship in the form of missiles you have to understand there are three variants in missiles and there is rapid um, ranged and torpedoes so let's get into it immediately with the rapids so the c type rapid um, missiles aren't really the strongest when it comes to missiles as you can see they have a 4300 meter per second uh, flight velocity meaning that you can outrun these missiles so for all of you who are running things like Dremules and uh, the smaller ships, these missiles aren't going to be all that effective on you. If you use a micro warp drive, you're definitely going to have the edge. If you use something slow, you're not going to get the edge. Remember there's 75% added to this uh, ship's firepower and with the activation time of 7 seconds, this is going to be really really devastating if you count it up in firepower against the large variant which is going to be basically double the time so it's going to be almost 105 um no not 105 uh, about 100 dps coming off the ship again with all research added into missiles its range will increase a bit from 28 so maybe about 35 to 40 with this particular missile set on the ship and the flight velocity increasing slightly you're looking at a really powerful hit of around 100. 5 again is going to put you in the same class as the rifle railguns. But please note this isn't the end for this particular class of weapon. The next is the C type large missile launcher. Sorry about that. This is the long range variant in the ship. And as you can see it has 4700 meters per second. Small vessels within its range are always going to get hit. Um, you're going to sustain some damage from it even if you are very fast. Remember trying to out velocity this ship is very close to the limit. If research is put into missiles, 
they're going to hit the 5,000 mark where it becomes almost impossible for your ship to beat. It has a 65, uh, 66 kilometer range by default. And when you add in that extra little bit for um, research, it's going to go upwards. The damage output on this is just going to be over 100 um, DPS, so maybe about 108. When you add everything together, this just should pull you up to a close, uh, a, a close match to the Rapids on its raw DPS per second. But when it comes to hitting with the ship, the ship is going to hit a lot harder than the Rapid when it comes to a single hit. A single hit from the ship should produce upwards of 6000 DPS with just 5 slots active. Okay, so let's go down to the torpedoes. Torpedoes are also another really heavy slot when it comes to the ship. As you can see, they really have a lot of extra firepower. They are close range uh, weapon and they are only meant to operate within the 11 km range. With research added, they will be able to operate at around uh, a 15 to 20 km range and that's just the maximum that comes on these torpedoes. These torpedoes are also really really powerful so please be warned when facing off against them. They do pack a lot of a punch. And when it comes to C-type large, here's something to note when it comes to these weapons in particular. This one produces almost a thousand DPS with the abilities of missiles. They do have a very slow flight velocity, so you can outrun them and you can get away from them. But remember, they hit severely hard. Any slow ships will take massive damage from them. Do not try to outbrawl uh, C-type large missiles. Uh, sorry, C-type large torpedoes. They will damage you very quickly. They are meant to sink other uh, battleships. Okay, so we've gone through the major weapons, let's go into drones. Now, since drones aren't going to be simple in the form of small or medium, there are actually two options when it comes to this for the ship. And that's the way that it's going to work for all of them. You have the option of standard drones, which are the prey, the prey eaters and the wasps. But let's just go through this here quickly. As you can see, it has a 25 DPS uh, rating with 100 as its actual firepower. Same will go for the Wasp in terms of firepower, but the difference is going to be the flight speeds. As you can see, they are a lot slower than the other drones. Sorry about that. Once more, 100 with a lot slower flight speed in terms of this weapon. And last is the Berserker. Now these are the last of the regular drones like the drones you would regularly use. And the Berserker is amongst the faster ones, it's second to the Praetors. So let's get to the Sanctuary drones. Sanctuary drones are a big difference from the original drones we use. These are the real heavy firepower ships. You're going to use them on close range against the right targets. Obviously if you are fighting other big ships you're going to use the Sanctuaries. They're really, really powerful for their purpose. So let's have a look at it. You actually can use MK9. So 112 is where they're going. They already have 12 extra DPS. So let me just open the MK9 here and show you it's 122. As you can see, it has an optimal range and accuracy fall off. Sorry, I forgot about that. As you can see, the range is lower on the curator. The range is uh, liar, uh, sorry, not liar, <laughs> it's uh, higher on the wardens. Let's open the guard. Let's see what the range is. It's 18 plus 30. It's a smaller one on the guard, so currently the warden is the best. And the last is the bouncer. As you can see, the bouncer has the largest range because of its large optimal uh, fall off. It is the best for using in all round combat. It gives you almost 90 kilometers. And that's excluding your research, which will really buff up those uh, levels. So if you are using them in combat, remember they can hit targets. They have good tracking speeds. And if you are using them in conjunction with your brawler weapons, they can really make a big difference. They are really meant for long range fighting because they're going to fire across distances like two extra weapons being deployed. So please note that when you do build your shop. Now in terms of mid slots, remember 
the ship favors more the ele electronic warfare and the close range fighting so let's go straight into electronic warfare if you are going to run webs on it it's because you're trying to take down slower ships remember it's not really that good at taking out slower ships it's really good at taking out large fast ships not fast ships just the larger ships in general so going for uh, stasis webifiers isn't going to be your optimal you're going to go for something like a warp scrambler and that's still not going to be good enough so when it comes to disruptor weapons you're not even going to go scrambler as i said you're not going to use webs webs are going to help you only to take out uh, slower ships they aren't going to help you against any of the small ships it's really not a hundred percent in your favor even if you hit something like a dremel with a web or two webs they still will stay outside of your tracking speed and you won't be able to do enough damage to them you need three track you need three webs just to pull a dremel down so that you can do minimal damage to it and it will take you way longer to destroy that ship than it will take for the dremel to destroy you and that's just that current when we move further so i would go with tracking the disruptors as my primary usage weapon because most ships are going to run um ranging weapons this here is going to affect their accuracy fall off their range bonuses and the tracking tracking speeds so this here will make it a lot better for taking on long range opponents and if you look at sorry this isn't right So it has a 36 kilometer, uh, a 50 kilometer range. When you add everything in, it's going to be near 75 kilometers with the bonuses from the ship. It's going to make a big difference in combat. Okay, the next thing you're going to put on the ship is a target painter. So you're going to go with two of your standard disruptors if you're going for the long range fight. If you're not going long range, you're just going to go with one. okay you're gonna go with one target painter so you have a nice large distance when it comes to target painting and you could also go with guidance disruptors now please bear with me when it comes to your disruptors you're going to have this type of a balance two disruptors and one target painter now the reason for that is this is really for taking on long range opponents if you aren't going to take on long range opponents like that You'll run one disruptor, one um, target painter. It always helps to have a target painter. And in your last two slots, you're going to go Nosferatu. Now, I know this doesn't sound like the best thing to do, but the ship doesn't have a very large capacitor. So you're going to want to fill it up as fast as possible. And two large Nosferatu is definitely going to be the way. And if you look at it, it may be big in terms of power usage, but you will be able to run it. <laughs> so with everything added to the system, you have two large Nosferatu for a brawler fit, which is going to be the best fit for the ship. Everything for the ship favors the closer range combat. So if you are going to use it, you're going to use it for brawling. With this particular format, you're going to be able to drain power and sustain your shield regen. You're going to be able to sustain um, doing a lot of things with the ship like running that uh, shield extender all of these things can be sustained through the mid slot so double Nosferatu along with whatever comes in the low slots okay so all this put together gives you a nice stable capacitor and it allows you to fight at its optimal very good so what you can do is you can use the ship to take on fleets with big ships so this is an elite fleet uh, countermeasure you're going to use it in the brawler format just like how you would use a balgon you're going to deploy in close range because it obviously has disruptor purposes and you're going to disrupt the long range weapon systems on ships you're going to do as much damage as you can this ship will be used more or less to take out things like drakes who are logistic to ships so that you can actually have more power when it comes to close range combat so that's the whole idea you take it you put it into a brawler fleet that's going to jump into an enemy bubble and that's how you would use it in pvp 
or ganking or war whichever way it goes and if you're going to use it in pve it's going to be dumped into the center of a massive wave to fight enemies at close range okay moving on let's move to the low slots on the ship now in terms of shield boosters this ship does have a lot of uh, shields so a large shield booster is definitely going to help you Unlike any of the other ships, you don't really have to worry about the uh, megawatt usage. It's going to stay steady. You only have five slots to fit in. So one C-type large shield booster, it's going to throw you through the roof. The next thing is going to be a shield extender, go down to large. Now, when it comes to large, um, large extenders, remember there's quite a lot of shield being added there for a few seconds. It's going to counter one full shot from something like a Drake that is going to buy you some time. So with this being added, it's going to give you this nice big chunk of uh, DPS resistance. And with the fact that you have that high power fire system, you actually can counter big ships very easily. So there you go on two of the five slots. We have three more slots remaining. Obviously the next one is going to go to an adaptive shield hardener. So C-type adaptive shield hardener to add the resistance. No armor repairs, no damage control, but we're going to need a cap battery. Since it runs on rail guns and you're running heavy shields on it, a cap battery will always be necessary. As you can see, it gives a nice big boost to your ship. And it's going to sustain you for quite some time. Now with all of these systems being added, be very careful about approaching your maximum limit for your power grid. Keep a very close eye on it. Remember your research is still very important for the ship. Last but not least, we need a micro warp drive on the vessel. It is very slow and it is definitely going to be used for brawling. So you could use it with an afterburner, an afterburner will be perfect. But a large C type um, micro warp drive will do fantastically. With this added to the system, it has a massive knockoff on the capacitor. This is definitely going to have a big hit to your capacitor. So be very careful about deploying it when you do this. With this here being done, you now have a nice big powerful ship. All five low slots are filled in. If you did go the afterburner route, remember you don't have that massive speed to reduce damage. But you do have some speed that is going to help you with most combat. Looking at it, there we go. It's a 183% flight speed adjustment. Okay, so we have gone through everything that goes into those low slots. Now for a brawler, you need a heavy shield tank and that is the way that it works. Brawlers don't really focus on extra damage or extra firepower. They focus on heavy defense so that they can stay in the fight for as long as possible. So for the ship is going to be 30% shield boost as your first rig, um, a reduction in capacitor need to sustain that capacitor for longer and a shield extender. So you want more shield on the ship. The more you have, the more resistance you have, the harder it is for ships to take you down. With those being added, the ship becomes unbelievably tanky. You can really take in a lot of DPS and you can deal out a ton. Now, obviously, depending on whether you're going rails or whether you're going torpedoes, it does make a big difference. Remember, the ship isn't really effective against small ships. If they get under your optimal range, you lose. Okay, in terms of your engineering, auxiliary thruster would be very useful for the ship because it's going to speed it up tremendously and two semiconductor controls because you're going to run through a ton of power running it as forward uh, a brawler foot and as i said you can try and use it ranged it's going to work for you slightly but it's not going to give you the range you really want so those are all of the warnings that go into it if you're going range you're going to have to change your low slot i'm not making a ranged uh, fit for the ship because this ship is a brawler you could use missiles on it because missiles always have good range so large missiles or torpedoes, they're going to give you a good DPS and a good um, fire power. I would suggest going with the C-type large uh, missiles, not the rapids, not the torpedoes. If you do go with uh, missiles on the uh, ship, 
that's going to give you a fantastic firepower. Now, if you are buying the ship, it's only a placeholder till you buy one of the faction ships. It's obviously a placeholder for one of three ships, and I'm going to explain which three. Number one is a placeholder for the Rattlesnake. Number two, it's for the Vindicator. And number three, it's for the Balgast. Now, the Balgast or the Balgast um, is the Modest Legion vessel that hasn't yet been released into the game. When it finally does arrive, it's going to change up a lot of the mechanics. It's going to change how that ship is actually used. Okay, so I'm done with that for now and I hope that you all did enjoy everything that I did. See you all in the next one.